Yo, since Splatoon 3 is still a new game at this point, all of the weapons currently only have one kit, and the kit that the Tri-Stringer got stuck with is Toxic Mist and Killer Whale 5.1. While it's not the definitive best kit that this weapon could have gotten, I still think that it's up there as one of the best. But maybe you don't quite understand how to use it yet. So today I'm going to be explaining how you can use the tri kit to its full potential. I'm also going to share some tricks you can do with this kit that you might not know of yet. But before I get to that, if you find my videos useful and want to see more from me, please consider liking the video, subscribing to my channel, and sharing my content around. Any support means a lot to me. Thanks. Let's start by looking at Toxic Mist. Frankly, it's not a very strong sub-weapon when you look at it compared to the likes of Splat Bombs and Fizzy Bombs, and could be considered the weakest part of the kit. However, it does synergize pretty well with the Tri-Stringer. Its primary use is pretty simple. Toxic Mist is used to slow down enemies and discourage them from pushing through an area. As a weapon that specializes in area denial, this is very useful for the Tri-Stringer. A big issue with this sub-weapon is that it doesn't have much impact in open areas, and whenever you use it, you're taking out a decent chunk of your ink tank that could be used for the main weapon. And the reason I bring that up is because the Tri-Stringer is an incredibly ink-efficient main weapon that can have a very long uptime while spamming arrows. So with that in mind, it's best to use Toxic Mist for the bow in these situations. The first is to throw it in small choke areas, like the choke in Inkblot Academy, or the ramp on Hammerhead Bridge. You're gonna want to do this when you see an enemy push starting to come through areas like these. Try to toss down the Toxic Mist before they get to the choke, since it lasts for a decent amount of time, and it guarantees that anyone trying to get through will have to travel through the whole mist. And if they do try to move through it, you can spam your arrows on them to deal damage that might even kill them. The second is when you're playing tower control, and the enemy is on the tower or is trying to get on the tower. This is especially useful when the enemy is at a checkpoint, as it will make it very difficult for the enemy to stay on the tower long enough to clear the checkpoint. Combine using Mist with focused shots on the tower, and you're going to be able to guarantee that anyone that decides to stay on the tower is dead. The third situation is if you're in a forward position supporting your teammates, and they lose their fights. The sooner you reposition out of even slightly risky positions, the sooner you can set up in stronger positions and hold the line for your respawning teammates. Now let's talk about the special weapon of the Tri-Stringer, Killer Whale 5.1. Most people have the misconception that you need to be able to be aggressive with it in order to get value out of it, which may give some people the idea that this special doesn't synergize well with the Tri-Stringer, which is a passive weapon. But you couldn't be more wrong. First off, it lets you scan for enemies through walls and cover, including cover that you can shoot over. It's useful even to just use the beginning of the whale to recon for sharking enemies and see who you can single out. Secondly, Killer Whale 5.1 is a great special for displacing backlines, especially the E-Leader, which is one of the Tri-Stringer's hardest counters in this game. You can use this special to add pressure onto an E-Leader and force them to move, allowing you to push up into a range where you can reach them. You can also use this special to help out teammates taking fights. If you can't be the one to get aggressive and get kills with the help of Whale, then maybe your teammates can. You can even send the Whale one way to displace one enemy in one area, while you spam arrows to pressure someone in another area. Sometimes though, you don't need to rely on teammates to capitalize on the killer whale. Instead, you can be the one using the whale to be aggressive and get picks for yourself. To explain how that works, let's talk about the Tri-Stringer's kit combos. I've already mentioned this, but when you throw down your mist, you can spam arrows inside of it to ensure that teammates cannot push past the choke without dealing with you from a long range or by the use of a special. This combo is really strong for slowing or even outright stopping pushes, at the cost of significantly cutting down on the main weapon's uptime before having to refill on ink. So if you need the slowest strong push for a short amount of time, comboing the bow's arrows and toxic mist can give you exactly what you need. Going back to what I was talking about earlier with whale, let's now talk about the main weapon and special weapon combo. If you don't already know, you can combo killer whale 5.1 with your own shots to kill opponents at long range. The whale deals chip damage and tracks enemies, so if you can see where the whale is tracking to and lead your AoE arrows so that the enemy swims into them and gets stuck, it's very possible for them to take the 84 damage from the arrows and die from either that or the whale that tracks onto them afterwards. This combo is especially potent on weapons that can't paint their own feet very well. It works very well for taking out backlines or any other slow weapons at long range. When you combine the powers of all the tri stringers kit together, you can basically trap enemies and secure kills as long as you can accurately spam arrows. If you target a whale on someone and then miss them, they'll be unable to squid roll to dodge the lasers because they'll be slowed down by the mist. If that enemy just got out of a fight, they probably don't have a lot of ink and they're probably surrounded by your team's paint. So in cases like these, you can usually just use a mist and whale on their own 
to finish off a kill while you focus your shots somewhere else. Otherwise, even if they're completely healthy, as long as you accurately shoot your AoE onto the enemy's position and catch them in their toxic mist, it's a very consistent way of killing just about any weapon. Let's look back on that last clip for a second. So here, I'm trying to scan for the dualies since I've been tagging them up with my AoE. I do catch the machine instead of the dualies, but it looks like they were already in a fight, they get stuck in the ink, and I'm able to mist them, whale them, and then they get stuck and they just die there. So once I just get one pair of lasers on the machine, I'm putting the rest on the flingza, and I'm watching where the whale goes so I can track the flingza's position and then shoot arrows in front of the flingza so that they get tagged up and die from it. This is just a really good example of how I used all of the tri kit together to get two kills and open up the zone for our team. That's the end of this video. If you enjoyed this content or found it useful, please consider leaving a like and comment down below. Thanks so much for watching, and see ya!